There is something absolutely wild that is implied by some of the lore in A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones that we don't talk about enough as a fandom. That would be the fact that the children of the forest, and through them potentially the old gods themselves, are heavily implied to have had a direct effect on the Targaryen family lineage that directly led to the births of Jon and Daenerys, basically making them responsible for setting up the timeline that our main story is taking place in. And today I want to explain how that happened and what some of the weird and wild implications of that are. And this isn't even a wild and out there theory, honestly as a Song of Ice and Fire theories go, this is like as straightforward as it gets, to the point where I genuinely just think it feels like this is exactly what George wants us to take from this bit of world building. So piecing this together, the clues start with the story of Jenny of Old Stones. She's the one that Podrick was singing that song about in season 8, that is Jenny's song, and it is talking about this girl who used to live at court. I'm not going to go super detailed because this is actually going to contain some spoilers for the Dunkin' Egg show that will be coming out, and I will talk about some of those, but I'm going to keep them as minimal as possible. I'm only going to spoil the things that, like, I have to to explain this theory. So the song that Podrick sings is actually a song from an universe that is requested at one point to be played by the Ghost of High Heart. The Ghost of High Heart is someone who knew Jenny personally. In fact, the Ghost of High Heart actually came to court with Jenny of Old Stones, and the fact that Jenny is the one who brought her to court basically implies like Jenny is the one who knows the Ghost of High Heart, whereas everyone at court doesn't, and Jenny says that the Ghost of High Heart is a child of the forest. She just directly says that this is what she believes. And the people at court all say, nah, that can't be, because children of the forest aren't real, or they don't exist anymore whatever the average Westerosi believes out of those two options. But the point is, no one takes Jenny of Oldstone seriously that she says this is a child of the forest, but we obviously know as readers that the children of the forest do exist. Some of them also do look a little bit like tiny people. Let's remember, they were called the children of the forest because they looked like little children even when they were fully grown up and they lived out in the forest. When Bran first sees Leaf, he at first thinks that it's Arya, and he even calls her the Arya thing when he's thinking about what she's doing, like in his narration. And just to add on top of this, in case you think that the children of the forest don't look enough like people to pass as an actual old woman, well, they do also have someone living in the cave with them who has made use of glamour magic before. This is a little bit of a spoiler for some Dunkin' Egg stuff, but yeah, it's basically confirmed that Bloodraven is at some point in that story using glamours to impersonate a different person to do some of his spying. So the fact that someone who ends up in the cave with the Children of the Forest knows about glamour magic definitely does imply that the Children of the Forest would know about it as well, whether they learned it from Bloodraven or whether Bloodraven learned it from them. I kind of tend to lean towards Bloodraven may have learned that from the Children of the Forest in the first place. If he had shown Green Seer abilities, it does make some sense that the Children of the Forest may have sought him out the same way they sought out Bran Stark through dreams and things like that, and potentially even Leaf contacting him directly. We know that Leaf is over 200 years old and that she spent much of her life walking the world of men so that she could learn to speak the common tongue, and I think one of the other things that she was doing out there is finding the next Green Seers. I think it's pretty likely that Leaf was in contact with Bloodraven, and that the Children of the Forest in general were in contact with Bloodraven long before he was actually up in that cave. All of this basically just to say that I really do think it's likely that the Children of the Forest have access to glamour magic, and if they do, it would also explain why Westeros has the legend of Snarks and Grumkins. One of the things that is part of that legend is that the Grumkins could steal you and basically replace you. If there are actually these little forest creatures who are capable of replacing little girls using glamours, and that's the Children of the Forest, it would kind of make some sense that this is a legend that would get passed around in Westeros. Sansa at one point wonders if Arya has been stolen and replaced by a Grumkin, and potentially the Ghost of High Heart could be using a similar type of magic to glamour herself just enough to look like a wrinkled old woman. The glamour isn't going to like change a little tiny child of the forest into like a 6-5 knight, but the Ghost of High Heart is described as a dwarfish albino woman, so obviously already looks a little bit different, and therefore would be a perfect disguise for a child of the forest using a glamour. And while I think what I've already pointed out is enough to assume that the Ghost of High Heart is very likely a child of the forest, what drives it home really for me is the fact that when you look at High Heart itself, 
it's described as a sacred location to the children of the forest, and there are rumors that it is still haunted by the ghosts of the children of the forest who were slain there. So you have a location called High Heart, which is said to be haunted by the ghosts of the children of the forest, and then you have a character called the Ghost of High Heart, who is said to be a child of the forest, and also looks like one. So all of this really just straight up obvious case in my opinion, the Ghost of High Heart is more likely than not a child of the forest. So the Ghost of High Heart gets to court about 40 years before our main story kicks off in A Game of Thrones, and because no one believes she's a child of the forest, everyone thinks that she is just a woods witch from the Riverlands. Woods witches are known in Westeros to give prophecies, and I don't know if we know that the king would have necessarily believed any woods witch's prophecy, but this woods witch came up and started talking to the king about the prince that was promised. You can see why he suddenly started to take that very seriously, and he actually directly listened to the advice given by this woods witch. Now, there are other characters who use the phrase the prince that was promised, so this isn't like a complete Targaryen family secret or anything, but the Targaryens definitely seem to, based on what we've seen in House of the Dragon, have some secret knowledge that they have to have the prince that was promised come from their lineage. It's famously said that Rhaegar believed himself to be the prince that was promised, but then later on turned to believing that it was his son. And of course, in the House of the Undying vision, we get some glimpses of that, him thinking that his son would be the prince that was promised, and his would be the Song of Ice and Fire. Well, it turns out that Rhaegar actually had some pretty good reason for believing this, because the prophecy that the Woods Witch told them, again the Ghost of High Heart, was that Rhaella and Aerys, their marriage, would be the line that produced the prince that was promised. So when Aerys and Rhaella get married, the first child they have is Rhaegar, so it makes a lot of sense that you are the prophecy baby Rhaegar, like he thinks that because he is actually the prophecy baby. He is the firstborn from the line that is said to produce the prince that was promised. And very importantly for our story today, Daenerys also comes from that line, as does of course Jon Snow, assuming he is actually Rhaegar's child. The other thing that's of note about the Ghost of Highheart is we actually do see her in the main story. She is still living as an old albino dwarf woman, just as she always has, out in the woods near Highheart. And basically what she does is she gets visions, seemingly from the weirwoods nearby, and gives prophecies still to this day. We've seen her give predictions, and we know that they are accurate in at least a symbolic way. So, just to like completely lay out the situation now that we have all of the steps in place, a child of the forest comes to court and tells the Targaryen king, hey, marry these two together, and that's how you're gonna get the prince that was promised. Then from that line is born Rhaegar, Viserys, and Daenerys, and then eventually Jon Snow. Without Rhaegar, you don't have Robert's Rebellion, which is basically the event that set up the entire timeline that we have for the beginning of the story. Without Daenerys, you don't have dragons reborn into the world. And without Jon Snow, you don't have the wildlings let through the wall and many other things. All of the timeline implications of this marriage are pretty darn crazy, and all of them are the direct fallout of some direct action by a child of the forest, who is probably receiving prophecies that are somewhat accurate from a weirwood. This is all pretty wild, and especially so when you take into account where season 8 of Game of Thrones ended, with Bran Stark as king. The guy most connected to the Weirwoods and the Old Gods, the guy who was potentially even using the Weirwoods to go back into the past and send visions. This is something that I've talked about quite a bit on my channel, in fact right when that episode aired in season 8 I put out a video about how this was basically Bran's battle plan, when he went back into his head and was warging away in the godswood, there's a decent chance based on what we saw where he was able to go back into the past and tell Hodor some information that broke his brain, that sort of implies Bran can go back into the past and send weirwood visions. One of the end cards at the end of this video is going to be like an entire explanation of just that idea because it's obviously very complex and requires a lot of talking about, but the main point is that yeah, it really does seem likely that Bran potentially could have even been the one who he himself went back and sent this vision, therefore setting up the timeline to have Jon and Danny be born. I don't think we know for sure that is the case, but it is just one of those pieces of really interesting speculation that opens up. Is it Bran? Is it the Weirwoods? Who's actually in control of the old gods in the first place? Because whoever it was really seems like they have directly stepped in to make sure that Jon and Daenerys would end up being born and I think that is really, really interesting. 
If that and other cool pieces of A Song of Ice and Fire lore like that are something that you find interesting, you're definitely going to enjoy one of the end cards here at the end of the video, and you should definitely hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll be back with something else very soon.